Hello Chipmunk and Chipet fans, and welcome to another Alvin and the Chipmunks elaboration video, well, podcast this time. My name is Grandy Tamias, and today's topic will be, which studio will make the next Alvin and the Chipmunks film? So in the first few weeks of starting my channel, I posted a video explaining why I think that a fifth live action Alvin and the Chipmunks film will not happen, and it's still, by a long shot, my most popular video. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend clicking the link in the description and checking it out before listening to the rest of this podcast, since this will kind of be a continuation of that. I was also met with some criticism at first, and I'll admit that I came off a bit too seriously, that I was crushing y'all's dreams for those of you who really wanted a fifth film to be a reality, but like I said, I wanted to do what I could to end off those rumors since they were claiming such without substantial evidence. Keyword being evidence. Just to forewarn you, the broad scope of this topic, while being about film studios, will also have major ramifications down the line for whether or not there will be any Alvin and the Chipmunks films ever again. Now, this is not to sound alarming or scare you into thinking that there won't ever be another Alvin and the Chipmunks film because I think it's very likely that there will be in some capacity within the next 10 or 20 years, whether it be a continuation of the Fox films or even more likely a reboot. But to understand how the making of an Alvin and the Chipmunks film works, in this case which studio will release it, we have to know a little bit about the histories of the companies involved and how film licensing and distribution rights work. Beginning with the latter, I can't exactly say that I'm a foremost expert on the terminology of it and the exact circumstances in the case of the Alvin and the Chipmunks franchise, but I'll try to use an example that you may be familiar with to give you a basic idea. Take the film rights to Spider-Man, for example, which are owned by Columbia Pictures and Sony. They have to make a Spider-Man film every certain number of years, otherwise they lose the rights to the property. Hence the reason for all the different film incarnations of him and associated characters since the early 2000s. Basically with movie rights, it's if you don't use them, you lose them. And in the case of Spider-Man, if Sony fails to do that, those rights go back to Marvel Studios directly, and then he'd be available to use in Disney's Marvel Cinematic Universe full time. Yes, I know that Spider-Man is, or should I say was, in the MCU, but I'll get back to that example in a few minutes. So if the film rights for the Alvin and the Chipmunks films from Fox didn't go back to Bagdasarian Productions after Disney's acquisition of Fox, sometimes companies have a contract clause like that, then they're going to expire eventually under Disney's watch, since, as I already covered, Disney would have to get Bagdasarian's cooperation if they wanted to make a new Alvin and the Chipmunks film. And that seems unlikely given the long and complicated history of Bagdasarian's limited partnerships with other companies, as well as the numerous lawsuits they filed over the years. So without further ado, I'll explain in order of least to most likely which major film studio Bagdasarian may choose to work with in the future. Of the six major Hollywood film studios, which now there are five of because of the aforementioned Fox acquisition, I'd say Universal and Disney are tied for least likely. Bagdasarian had worked with Universal before in the late 90s, but long story short, uh, Universal's unwillingness to do much with the franchise put it in a state of almost pop culture obscurity for about a decade before the 2007 film. So Bagdasarian, around the year 2000, took the major film studio to court to regain full creative control over the intellectual property. Basically, I doubt Bagdasarian would be willing to trust Universal a second time, and for all I know they might have negative feelings associated with that studio. With Disney, I guess you can't completely rule them out, even with the very minor contributions they made to chipmunk merchandising in the 90s, but they just weren't what they once were. All they really did back then was distribute some VHS tapes from the 80s series, along with some sing-along compilations from the Alvin show as well. Knowing Disney these days, a partnership with them would just be giving them too much more of what they want, money and IPs under their control. Now yes, I know that's how a lot of businesses work, and I'm not trying to paint Disney or any of these companies in a bad image, but I just think that Bagdasarian, always being concerned with keeping their creative control, wouldn't want the influence of Disney to change that. 
I say this in regards to Disney because even though Fox never owned anything creative-wise about the Alvin and the Chipmunks franchise, Disney is the kind of company that will try to own whatever it can out of anything they work with. Take Pixar, for example. Disney had been working with them to distribute films up until the time Cars came around, and then they outright bought them. I guess the way it goes is, if you work with the mouse, you become part of the mouse. Not that Disney seems to be interested in the Alvin and the Chipmunks franchise following the acquisition anyway, at least as far as I know. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I'd be surprised if Disney themselves so much as mentioned Alvin and the Chipmunks in a report at all. And just as a last minute insert before I post this, there was an article from a movie news website called Screen Rant that I have seen being shared around the fandom titled Alvin and the Chipmunks 5 Updates Will Another Sequel Happen, posted on August 5th. A link to it will be in the description. It does talk about some of the same things I mentioned in my video, like the diminishing box office returns of the live action films, the original audience getting older, and the fact that Disney now owns the film rights. And while they do mention Ross Bagdasarian Sr. as well, they don't talk about the involvement of Bagdasarian Productions, specifically how, like I said many times and will even more later, uh, Disney will need their cooperation and approval if they wanted to make a new Alvin and the Chipmunks film. I admit that that last part about Bagdasarian's involvement is more of an educated guess on my part, but I've also read many similar articles from other entertainment news websites that list Alvin and the Chipmunks as one of the Fox properties Disney will be rebooting within the next couple of years. Now, I don't expect the people who wrote these articles to be experts on the Chipmunk franchise, and no offense to them, but I think they should have done their research a little better for reasons that I am about to explain. I guess it does make sense that most of them would overlook Bagdasarian Productions, since these articles were more concerned with Alvin and the Chipmunks as a brand associated with Fox. Another thing to take note of is that, as some of these articles imply, Disney seems like they're about to crank their reboot dial to 11, as evident from the rumor going around that they will be rebooting Home Alone, as well as the more definite fact that they will be rebooting the X-Men and Fantastic Four characters into the aforementioned Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it's that MCU example I want to come back to. Disney now outright owns the X-Men and Fantastic Four properties that Fox had since they were included in the acquisition. Gee, I'm making the word acquisition sound scary. Fox, however, never owned the Alvin and the Chipmunks characters prior to the merger, so they were not carried over into Disney. Only the Chipmunk film rights were. Instead, Bagdasarian holds the rights to the characters, as is fairly obvious from how protective they are of them, as I have said many times before. Therefore, Disney would need Bagdasarian's cooperation in order to make films that include characters they do not own just like how Disney does not own Spider-Man, and therefore needed Sony's cooperation to include him in the MCU. But we all know the bad news about that by now. Sorry for reiterating myself, but I think with that last example, we can definitely put this case to rest. The movie news articles are wrong, and Disney cannot make an Alvin and the Chipmunks film. Disney's rights will expire, and, well, that's the whole point of this podcast, so let's get back to the main studio discussion. So that's two studios down already. Technically three because, again, Fox acquisition. The ones left are Warner Brothers, Columbia Pictures, and Paramount. Let's knock out Warner Brothers next. The only sort of prior connection they've had with Bagdasarian, as far as I'm aware, is that they own Cartoon Network, which used to air reruns of the 80s series. That's it. And I don't see anything that would interest Bagdasarian to work with them now. Columbia, though, owned by Sony, is where things get interesting. Under the chance that the next Alvin and the Chipmunks film could be an animated reboot, which personally I'm hoping for, Sony might be a decent candidate for it since they've really been expanding their animation division. And David Feiss, creator of Cow and Chicken, works for Sony Animation and also worked for Bagdasarian Productions back in the days of The Chipmunk Adventure and the last couple of seasons of the 80s cartoon. Not only that, Ross Bagdasarian Jr. and Janice Carmen have said in that one of their inspirations for the live-action Chipmunks was the first two stored little films, which were made by Columbia and Sony. So if Bagdasarian and Sony could come to some sort of agreement, I think we could get some pretty good Alvin and the Chipmunks films out of it. 
However, as good as that sounds, I would say that the most likely studio Bagdasarian Productions would go to if they were going to make a new Alvin and the Chipmunks film would be Paramount. The reason why I think so is because its parent company, Viacom, also owns Nickelodeon, which of course is currently airing the CGI series. Paramount has also made quite a number of live-action films already based on animated franchises, such as Transformers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and the upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog movie. So I think they'd be up to the challenge if it wasn't a live-action Chipmunk reboot. Hopefully it would go better than the films I just listed. But there's actually a possibility that, if it were an animated film, it could be set in the CGI series universe, since Paramount has also made films based on their Nicktoons before through Nickelodeon movies, though it would have to be much higher quality animation than what the series is in order to compete with the likes of Illumination, DreamWorks, and Pixar. However, since Alvin and the Chipmunks is not a Nickelodeon original creation, I doubt this would be possible. Although for an animated reboot, no matter which studio, would probably have to wait until after the current Nickelodeon series has ended, since they may not want to confuse audiences with two different animated versions of the characters at once. I guess the mere fact that Bagdasarian is at least in some way associated with Viacom at present is what makes me believe that Paramount would be the most likely option. But at the end of the day, the situation is probably going to be a bit more complicated than even I'm making it out to be. Oh, side note, I forgot to mention this a moment ago, but Paramount also did release some DVDs uh, from the 80s series until, I think, a couple of years ago when Bagdasarian officially took it over again. And in doing research for this podcast, which if you couldn't already tell I did way too much of, I was surprised to learn that even in the smallest ways, Bagdasarian has had connections with all six of the major film studios, or at the very least the companies that own those studios, with maybe the exception of Warner Brothers. And sure, they could partner up with a smaller independent film studio instead, but that wouldn't give a new Chipmunk film a lot of exposure and would probably perform very poorly at the box office. Anyway, feel free to let me know in the comments which studio you think will make the next Alvin and the Chipmunks film and why. I'd say the options are narrowed down to Sony and Paramount, but if you can make a solid case for the other studios, I would very much like to hear your opinions and facts that I may have missed. Don't forget that you're also welcome to like and subscribe, and with that said, I hope that you enjoyed this podcast, and thank you for your time and listening to it.